So, so I, I get you concerned. You shrunk the size of the building. So I've watched I watched all the, the bigger developers in Quincy for the last five years, and I'm super proud of Quincy. I think Quincy has a lot of potential. Believe it or not, this lot size, the frontage, the depth, and the total square footage is actually a big lot for Quincy. The development around Quincy that has occurred the last five years, this warrants, uh, this size project warrants, it's a, it's a gentle approach, and I say that with total respect. If you compare it to the previous projects in the past, and that's a fact, you can take it from North Quincy, you can take it to Quincy Center, you can take it to Wollaston, that's just what it's based on. And I watched the different developers in Quincy, what they did, what size lots, and this is definitely less, less invasive. They, they did projects in North Quincy that were zero, zero setbacks, very tight. I mean, I did my best to take into consideration the neighborhood. I grew up on Treslin Way. 1214, was that it? I lived there for two months. I actually moved in. Some Asian people bought it. And they, 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 they fixed everything. They, they covered everything up, but there was some weird mold and stuff. I don't know. It was weird. But the Bethany Church got a ton of traffic. There's a ton of activity going on at Bethany Church in that neighborhood. And I'm not sure what they do. If I may say, you know, your feedback is very much appreciated. Uh, it will help Steve, you know, in his decision-making process as well on how he proceeds. Steve, here. was your thought yeah. condos or rental units? Condos. Ask the same question. Okay. And what, what are you um, building your financial structure around? What are you What are you anticipating selling the units for? What so it price? depends on the market, right? So right. Been... But I mean, just you know, your your to make your money back. Your borrow napkin. You know, what's your what's your quick sketch? We don't know what the market will be two years from now. Right. We hope that maybe. But four. you're going to the bank for financing based on some number. Just just a window. Just a. Four ninety nine for the two beds. That's yep. a relatively conservative number. That's based on a certain square footage. Two bed, two bath. And for the one bed, which would be around six fifty square feet, it'd be around three forty nine, which would be you know on the lower end conservative. The type of people that go, I mean, if you've been to Fuji and Quincy Center, if you've been to the new bars and restaurants, the type of people that buy the units are generally kids that work in Boston, that they're working. So, I mean, I'm not one to sell, you know, there is some uh, discretion of who you sell to in a real estate transaction. I mean, you can say that, that if you're just saving face or just verbiage, it's just your word of mouth. But, you know, there is some discretion of who you sell to. Uh, that's getting really detailed, but I think that it's close proximity to Quincy and the extremely great things that are going on. It's, it, it's an exciting project. The other question I had, and I meant to reach out to a couple of local developers, Rob, you may know just because of some of your firm's clients. Do we know where um, the occupancy is? So I know West Chestnut's full, but what about the, you know, I know Terramire Mount Road's full. What about Central Middle School or some of the, my boss, the Boston properties, the Temple? Co condominiums? Yeah. Uh, I, know the, I, know, I know the Temple uh, selling really well. Yep. Uh, that was the last I heard. I, I, I think Central be full, I think right? Central kind of revamped. Yeah. They had them out there and a little bit too low and devamped there. That's, that's what I was told. Uh, the Galvin Brothers uh, downtown um, on uh, Clydeman, yep. uh doing very well in that respect. So it's a pretty hot market. Right it's a hot market. Now. You know, because I think I people see... Some people were concerned, geez, you're building all these. Are they going to be yeah. able to occupy them? The right. answer is yes, right? Yeah, absolutely. In West of Chestnut, uh, rentals are filling up quickly as well. Uh, that market is hot. And not even those types of units, you know, different tiers of units are, it's, the, the occupancy is pretty high right now in Quincy. I think a lot of that is attributed to, you know, what downtown, uh, how it's moving forward. Absolutely. At, at what no. point does this need to be declared as to the type of dwelling that it is, apartments or, or condos, at what point in this process? Does it have to it be doesn't. Declared? So it isn't something that gets conditioned. It is up to the applicant. It really For is. For condos, for the it's, city's it's, interest, the condos derive a higher tax revenue. So the condos to us are more beneficial than, than what we'd be collecting in property tax from an apartment unit, but that isn't um, a condition that the city could put on the project. It's not. It's really dictated by the market. Okay. You know, as Steve said, it's going to take two years. There, the there's a lot of projects, so. too, that live at the, you know, I know uh, years ago we used to live up at the Archstone at Granite Lakes. They built those initially as condos. They, you know, ended up making them into apartments. So I think That's it right. really and is very market And the opposite of that is the, the temple. Temple, the temple, was temple right. So now they're kind of Yeah, now they're condos, though. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Um, what is your timeline, um, if you can um, sort of frame that for folks who, because I know you're taking feedback and, and probably it sounds like Steve's going to be talking to some of the other neighbors. Yeah, it's going to depend on. Do you have a timeline in your... Uh, we'd like to file, you know, if Steve is going to move oh. forward on this, uh, September. So second Wednesday would be a third yeah, Wednesday? Yeah, I think it's mid-September mid typically is, uh, is the planning yeah. or the site plan review. Yeah. When, when you say transit-oriented, I, I believe that's what you said about, um, what, what is well, the definition of that, happen. of transit-oriented? Isn't it? one didn't help. I mean, we're hearing that all over the place, but isn't that kind of saying that this, they're not going to have cars? But that's definitely yeah, not true. Enough. The, the city of Quincy partnered with, uh, with the Commonwealth on a study of, of Wollaston, generally, you know, and, and kind of looking at that. And it's, it's typically those residential units that are within a certain distance from, uh, you know, public transportation. And what's the distance, you know? Uh, I think it was like between a quarter and, and, and a half mile. Because I heard that there was a study done, and people, they thought, were going to take we're actually going to walk, aren't they? They were all taking the cars or whatever. And I was told by a person in the city that the only true transit-oriented place was the one up in North Quincy that's being built where the tracks are. Other than that, these are, they're using that term, but it really doesn't fit. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, I think it does have to qualify. The know? city's really changed as far as parking variance release, right? When the transit-oriented development study was first proposed, it was kind of, here's a circle drawn around the transit stations, and that would meet the, that criteria. Um, we've really been at minimum going with that one per regardless because you, we recognize that you might be commuting Monday through Friday, walking to the train, but you're still having a car for the weekends. And this, the culture hasn't shifted that people are, are um, you know, Quincy's still suburban. As much as it has an urban corridor, it's still suburbia. And yeah, Mr. Fatsy is planning director has commented on that as well. You know, We've seen and, a big and, shift. And there, yeah, there is, a, there is a, 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 a transit oriented nature to a lot of these projects. And it is, you know, is it as much as the, the studies have shown? Who knows, you know? And, no, I understand. And, uh, is it gonna, are you going to allow pets? It's a great question, actually. I think a lot of the successful developments in Quincy, if you want to use that adjective, mm -hmm. they've been taking, uh, they make the pet give DNA samples. So if the pet bees species, they can know who to charge to the tenant. <laughs> so what I do work well, that, like, that's, that's, true. A, that's, a, that's true. a separate comment, but I mean I personally don't I'm not a big pet fan. Yeah, because right I mean, Right now in my neighborhood, you put 24 units, you potentially 24 even more. Some units have more than one pet, and, yeah. and there's no one keeping track of anything there. You know? Right now on the way here, one of the dogs was off the leash. You know? It's just animal control, I mean, that's all I can get. I had to see dogs off the leash. Probably put something together uh, where your home, home is. You know how this would affect your home with respect to sunlight. Um, he could, he could, you know, possibly figure that. You know. And just the, I know construction is law to agree to, so even controlling that might be very hard. I mean, having that, especially during the summer, people opening their windows, the construction, kind of breathe that in for window cover lawns. And I know you said your material will be wood based, so that steel. I mean, just never sure exactly what type of material goes into the building as well. And about being soundproof, I mean, you said you want to attract a lot of the people that are working in Boston and commuting. And I'm sure they may be young, trying to have parties, you know, keeping noise level to a minimum. That is hard, even now. Sometimes in the summer, you hear people having parties. I know you can't really control who has those parties, but trying to sleep around 9 or 10 or even later, it's very hard. You can't go and tell them to pay. Yeah. I think the if somebody's having a party in their own personal property, the, if they were to purchase a unit, um, I'm not sure what type of person you're referring to, but that qualified buyer would have to get a mortgage to put 20% down on a $500,000 property. 
So I think that coming up with X amount of dollars right away eliminates the type of people who are going to be coming in. What? The what, are you, yeah, yeah, but Steve, what are you yeah. talking about? Yeah. Just, just because people have money, they, what are they, they saying? Don't they, they, don't they don't want like, what? Yeah. They don't what party. Are you and I can see, oh, like, the price is <laughs> So I don't think that that would be like a problem to get the 499 kind of price point. But it would be probably young population. And with the young population, is these kind of problems occur where they have these parties because they just have too much energy. <laughs> I mean, a lot of this could be mitigated with like a condo association and that sort of thing, but if it ever became apartments, what then? It's true. You know what I mean? I think the, you know, I do my best to listen to what you have to say. If, uh, if I offend you and you laugh, I don't mean to offend you. I'm happy to listen to what you have to say. And if you have suggestions on, on here, I can give you know, my email, my phone number. I'm happy to have a constructive conversation on productive ideas. Happy to, to listen now. I think it's like I hear like from most people, uh, I do see that the height, 56 feet. Um, I mean, for us, we do have a kind of a big lawn in between our property and your property. But for my, and you know, yeah. my, you know, for people, especially in the back, anyone on the other side, I can see for them, it's a huge building in between. Mm -hmm. For us, it's like a top portion leaving a shadow, but for them, the whole building is leaving a shadow. So sure. that could be a bigger problem. For sure. um, I, I sent around some pictures of a building that just got finished in Quincy Center. They, you guys haven't seen it. If you want to send those down? It's Mechanic Street. It's Mechanic Street that just got finished. I was just showing you how a building of that size dwarfs a three-story house. It's just, a I mean, three -story. that's a big three-story house on the corner. And, and look at that building next to it. Mm -hmm. I believe Mechanic Street was 30, was 30 something units. 34 units. But almost the almost the height, I'm talking the height. The okay. height. The yeah, dwarfing, that's the thing. We, the that's dwarfing the of the house. The house is on either side of it. And and I was going to take pictures from the back because yeah. it's just dwarfing all the house. And how about? It, it's, it used to you know, be a parking lot. Yeah, it used to be a parking lot, so they probably got away with it being a lot bigger. Yeah. And I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, as you know, when I was listening to the Stansburys, uh, it sounded like, you know, if this was reduced, and I know you're the guy and, 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 and you know, you, you, you're running the show uh, construction-wise, money-wise, or whatever, that it would fit into the neighborhood, you know, and it wasn't as high, and it was three units instead of five, or whatever we had for units there, you know. Um, that it would work, that it would comply with the neighborhoods. A lot of the neighborhoods that are even away from the city now, when somebody gets a chance to stick one of these in, they try like hell, yep. and there's, I'd like to count how many variances that the zoning board has given out over the past 10 years before a lot of people have kind of woken up a little bit, and I know a lot of it has to do with the downtown and a lot of the big buildings down there which fit in, but people have woken up, and I think Jeff Hines made a point so many years back, you probably wouldn't have a problem with that because you'd be the only guy around that had one. Now, everybody mm -hmm. is trying to stick a unit mm -hmm. in where it doesn't fit. That Not just on Newcomb, Marymount had some episodes, and different, we go all over the place. Well, the and, you know, so yeah, I, know. I think the consensus is if it, if it was smaller, you know, and, and, it, and it fit because, you know, it will, it will blossom, it will grow. The next guy, you know, or, or maybe even you would buy the next one. If this one worked, why not put up another one? You know, we could hear the same story. And, and I'm not, you know, taking a shot at. And, and anybody, uh, this is the business they're in, this is their, the way they make their income, but I think it's that whole, uh, it's got to fit the neighborhood now. We do too much of this. Mm -hmm. We're way oh, too yeah. much of this. You know, if there's an opening, a crack, an alley, a crevice, mm -hmm. there's four condos going uh -huh. in there somehow. And well, there's it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't work everywhere, though. 
saturated. Oh yeah, but I bet you the batting average up there with variances oh. is pretty high in regards to giving them out. I don't know, you know, and I'd like to check that out myself to just see how many times they have said no in, in, in and around the city. In and around the city, you know, and I bet you it's not too many times. So I think that's not necessarily fair because a lot of times plans come to us and for anyone who's been to 1073 in Hancock Street for proposals, I've got three of them, Rob will tell you because he's the attorney, and we've killed them before they've even made it that far. We've had them pull them out. But on record, it's going to say withdrawn without prejudice. But the, by all means, it wasn't withdrawn without prejudice. It was us getting together with our constituents. And Kurt, not Kurt and my part, wow. partner, yeah, because we had bought that in the city too. Right, the but they had a monstrosity as my A few guys said it right off the bat, you know? Um, I mean, but look at that building now. How high is that building now? 10 feet? It was just a conversion of use to resident. I mean, there's been, been a lot of different ones. So to say, we, I, I know that Kurt and I in particular, and a few of them have had. Um, a lot of that we've kicked off knows before they even got to the plate. And then a lot that we've sent packing midway through the process. Yep. yep. The problem, no, no disrespect to you two, but the problem with this neighborhood, there's too many different councilors in this neighborhood. It's like they would never split the neck into two or three different wards. You so know what I'm saying? That, the that's Secretary of State does that. When we remapped, we all added our piece. And so you, what you'll see is that the geographic limits start the mapping for the council and you have to have parity that we have to have equal representation. So for example, for me in Ward 1, you have two peninsulas. You start there till you hit the magic number and you grow forward into the Quincy Center. Previously, I was on the other side of Washington Street, up by you, hit up Baxter. I said, keep me on the, you know, the same side of Washington. It makes more sense and Brad changed over there. We changed around the center, but it's like, where are we all dead end? Brad wore two starts at the Forver Bridge and at Quincy Ave. He comes into the middle, so you're right. It definitely all merges into the middle, but there's, there's hard to stop boundaries on the city limits. I never considered not notifying Margaret for this. <laughs> no, I know, I know that, but what I'm saying is... <coughs> we all work well together in the Board of Territory. Our neighborhoods have been separated. Like Elm Street right now is three different wards. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> really, really right. Mean. But, you know, I think the interesting, the, the part of understanding, and I wish I um, had a map to show you, is understanding the zoning map. So when you were talking about, you know, the neighborhood where I live, it's residence A. Residence A in the zoning use chart says single family only. That's what goes in that district. And what we're talking about, and part of why you're seeing a lot of the development in your area, is that you have the denser districts in your neighborhood. So just because you live in a single family neighborhood, uh, in your own home as a single family, there's multi-units around you, which allows for these multi-units. You want to keep yours as a single family, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, and the onslaught of downtown is going to be a big improvement to your property value. But the neighborhood, how you've known it, it's the underlying zoning map that drives this development. It's not, the, it's not us in the city, it's that this is zoned business or industrial. Why, you know, why, does, why is Hassan Brothers allowed there? Because it's a business district. Just because there's a single family house that's been there forever, that property carries development rights. And so that isn't something that we're here to change. This is what's existing on the map. But I, I can't go in and spot zone it. It's illegal for me to change that. I understand, but then again, like I said to you earlier, Louis is not zone business B, and they yeah. don't want, same as my neighbor, but they don't want development down there. And right. it gets shut down. But if we say it, we're made to but seem they, like we're against it. No, so I think different thing, right? So they were, tr so a little bit, at, let's talk apples to apples. This is a property that is zoned business C, highest dense development. That is zoned business B. Everything around it is residence A. It's the only lot that doesn't fit the character of the residential because it's pre-existing non-conforming. So when you look at the property around there, look at the map, it's substantially residence A. You have some of these older commercial properties from 100 years ago when House Neck was the Cape and a tourist destination. But we don't have hotels, we don't have carousels, we don't have steamboat landings. The character of the neighborhood's changed and it's very heavy residential. So you have to look at um, apples to apples. But there is still a lot of business be along the street there. Correct. And yeah. the same thing is they're currently all occupied, just like you're seeing. They're all occupied by residential structures. The thing that supports House Neck is that it doesn't make economic sense to put a business on the dead end of a peninsula. There's a reason all those business properties have flipped to residential, right? You can't make money at the dead end of a peninsula. We have vacant businesses as it is now. I understand, but they don't want to walk on those there. Okay. Well, they did. In the, in, on one of the other industrial zones, the old Harvey's Wharf was an industrial zone, and they came in with a buy right five story project. Can I ask a question about guest parking? It's more directed to the customers. Yeah. Uh, what's the enforcement scenario in Quincy in terms of like, 
So, you, you know, you don't live on Dickens Street, but actually people park on the sidewalk all the time. So what? Uh, I suggest on you the call. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. On the sidewalk. Yeah, on the that, that actually is um, something that, ins well, you can get a ticket for, by the police, parking enforcement, and also inspectional services. So I can call the police and Absolutely. ask them to come yes, and that, yes, We yes. encourage you to do so. I'm looking so. at the number of lots here, and I'm not seeing that many for guest parking. It's already a situation today. It's like, what's going to happen when there's all these units here? Rob, and people this, park on the sidewalk. Is this parking compliant, or are they asked for parking relief? We are we are asking for parking relief. Uh, okay. You know, it's one and a half uh, spaces uh, per yeah, unit. Yeah, one point eight. We're about I, one, I would one suggest, quarter, and yeah. as we have conditioned other projects, that you come in with a parking compliant application. Yeah, it's and, a big challenge. And I think it's in every other aspect, seeing. when Steve and Brian were designing this, is we tr we try to meet as much yeah. as we're able to when you're designing this. You know, and park is one of those wasn't but one of those Brendan, things we, we could meet. Just to know? talk about that is the, each of them the the table of use regulations is kind of driving what in what district is the requirement um, the same as for my own house or your house you're not required to have guest parking either but we all have company we all have parties yeah I just wanted to so just for parity right we don't get to put conditions on them that we don't on everybody no, else and again that's more addressing yep. you no, than I'm, it is them and like just to, just to put a little context to this. Okay. Just for a little context of this, we have YMCA overflow that people yep. park out there all the time. Yep. We have high school. Whenever there's something going on at the high school, they park on the sidewalk. Oh, yeah. yep. uh, and, all, and you're seeing YMCA overflow now? Or now that they have whole parking lots finalized? Not now, but it's okay. high school definitely all, like, all the time. So what, during the day, during school hours, uh, at school pickup time? Events. They have the party they have events. And, and, yeah. Yeah. Events? Yeah. Like, the and they're parking on the like all just yeah. parking lot really it looks like a parking lot. So on, on, on the sidewalk, they need to move it inside. So for them, this guy yeah. is at the same time. Yeah, I couldn't even get out of my driveway, and I had to be somewhere. And you call the police, and they do nothing. They say they can't do it. They can't do it. There's too many. I mean, come on. There's people parking on the sidewalks. At 2 thirds between, school gets out at 2.30, between 2 o'clock and 2.30, I cannot get in and out of my driveway because people pick up their kids oh, and yeah. they block my driveway. I've put planters in front of my house because I like my house to look nice, mm -hmm. okay? At least I try, and they've hit them, <laughs> okay? I've replaced more barrels this year. I didn't even bother putting any up. So if one, one of the areas the city most needs improvement on traffic and parking. I mean, we hear you loud and clear. The city council held back the mayor's budget, asked if we need more funding, we need more staff, we need more resources. We are conducting a citywide traffic study. We're asking for, hey, tell us what you're seeing in the field. I'm leaving the public meeting. They scheduled this. Nobody in the neighborhood wants it. There's a 715 zoning meeting that I have to go tape. And this is in Coddington. And as you can see, So they got one at Coddington, and the next meeting's at City Hall. So that meeting was called by Council LaForce and Councilor Hughes, and they were talking about building 18 units right down there. I wish I could have stayed. But it's only a neighborhood meeting. Going over the city hall.
They're having a neighborhood meeting at Cardington, same time. Huh? I got an hour and 15 minutes of Robert Fleming not having a good day. Okay? They want to build 18 units on Newcomb Street, 13,000 square feet, Business C, Stephen Neolsey, donated 950 to Cole Class here. <laughs> Shorted them 50 bucks. I am running for Ward 5 now, though, instead of At Large, and that's because of Dan Ramondi. He took papers out today for At Large. They're trying to silence me. I at least wanted to go to the debate and get a voice. Oh. Cutting the street right next to Quincy High School. Right across. Right next to Hassan Brothers. Yeah, right next to the Right across the street. 